The Cold War Dictionary is making a comeback. We're hear hearing about iron curtains, nuclear deterrence, non-alignment. What about mediation? Even during the Cold War, we had peace brokers, countries that would reach out to both sides. This time, too, there are mediators, four of them. President Emmanuel Macron of France, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett of Israel, Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India, and President Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey. Each of them has a distinct relationship with Russia and the West. Let's start with President Macron. He is working the phone lines hard. Since Russia's invasion, Macron has spoken to Putin four times. All four conversations reached a dead end, but Macron is not giving up. He feels Russia's security interests must be accommodated. What's in it for him? For starters, Macron is up for re-election this year, and nothing sells more than ending a war. Secondly, France has generally been wary of blindly following the U.S. We saw that during the Iraq war. And we are seeing it now. Macron prefers a European response to Russia. After all, the war is in Europe not in America. Also, France was hit by AUKUS last year, remember, and it knows better about American alliances. The second mediator is Naftali Bennett. Now, this was a bit of a surprise. Bennett has dialed Putin thrice since the invasion. He also made a surprise visit to Moscow on Saturday. After the trip, he briefed Zelensky on the progress. So Bennett is keeping both lines open. Again, the question, why? Why is Israel mediating a European crisis? Reports say because Zelensky requested it. Israel and Russia do have military cooperation on Syria, on the Iran nuclear deal. So Bennett does have a working relationship with Putin. Plus, there is an emotional aspect. The Jewish community in Ukraine, it is centuries old. The president, Volodymyr Zelensky, is himself Jewish. So Israel does have a stake in this war. The third mediator is Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He has spoken with President Putin three times. Initially, the emphasis was on evacuation. More than 20,000 Indians were stuck in Ukraine. Their safe passage was top priority. Now the emphasis is changing. On Monday, Prime Minister Modi had a constructive suggestion. A direct conversation between Putin and Zelensky. And this signals an evolution of India's position from abstention to active engagement. And India has the clout to do this. It shares a strategic relationship with both Russia and the West. Once the evacuation is done, New Delhi can step up diplomatic efforts. The fourth mediator is President Erdogan of Turkey. Again, he has clout on both, both sides. Turkey has excellent relations with Russia and Ukraine. If you think about it, Turkey's mediation is a contradiction. Ukraine is using Turkish drones to take out Russian soldiers and tanks, but the very same Turkey is also pushing for talks. So Erdogan is not mediating as much as playing both sides. On Thursday, he's hosting a very important meeting. Foreign ministers from Ukraine and Russia are flying down to Antalya. It will be the first high-level engagement since the war broke out. Separately, Lavrov said he is ready to attend the meeting in Antalya. At the same time, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba told us he will also attend. Both ministers asked me to particularly take part in this meeting and have a three-way dialogue. Like I said, each mediator has a distinct relationship, a distinct national interest. France wants peace and stability in Europe. Israel wants Russian military cooperation. India wants safe passage for its people. Turkey wants to reaffirm its commitment to NATO. The question is, will they be successful? Well, on the face of it, talks may appear pointless, especially when airstrikes are on in the background. But open lines of communication are very important. I can give you three reasons why. Number one, it offers an exit route for Russia. Right now, there is immense pressure on Putin, economic sanctions, diplomatic isolation, military setbacks. If, in Putin's own words, cornering someone is never a good idea. And that's where mediators come in. Reason number two, it avoids miscalculations and military errors. Take the nuclear plants, for instance. When Macron spoke to Putin, he raised the risk of a nuclear accident. To discuss... Issues like these, you need open lines of communication. And reason number three, it helps humanitarian operations, whether it's evacuations, aid missions, ceasefires. Simply put, without mediation, this war will linger. Having said that, mediation alone cannot help very much. Ultimately, it's up to Ukraine and Russia to end this fighting. Getting them on the same table, that's all that the mediators can do. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.